Hello Year 12, I hope you're all keeping well. Um, this video is going to go through a set of the exam questions that I um, set for you during the last few weeks. These are the questions on pathogens um, that started with the, the question about TB and coronary heart disease. As I say, we went through some of these in our lesson yesterday. For those of you that were there, you can click through if you want to the part where I go through the six mark questions. Um, everybody else, I have started to fill out these answers because I did this during the lesson yesterday. So I'm just going to very quickly go through these questions and then spend a bit more time talking through the six mark questions in a minute. Okay, so question one, um, just asked what is meant by an infectious disease, asking for a bit more information. Um, you just need to say that it means it is communicable or it is spread between organisms or even just spread between people. Um, second part of the question asks for an example of an infectious disease and an example of a non-infectious disease, not the ones that are included here. Okay, so obviously um, we can't include CHD because it's other examples, so we have to say HIV. Um, I mentioned coronavirus, it wouldn't be in the, the, the mark scheme obviously. Influenza, anything else that um, we know of a communicable disease would be fine. And then for non-infectious diseases, um, COPD, cancer, diabetes, any of those kind of things would be absolutely fine. Uh, the next question looked at uh, the disease called Dutch elm disease. Okay, there's some facts about that about that disease. The key things that I picked out were that it was caused by a fungus, and that um, beetles picked up fungal spores while feeding. Okay. Suggest two reasons for the rapid spread of fungus in the arm population. I mentioned the mobile vector, the beetles, which are able to move from tree to tree. And I also mentioned the fact that it has fungal spores which are easily carried in the wind. Okay, There are some other things, obviously, um, Dutch elm tree well, um, grew, or the English elm tree, so grew in very close proximity to each other, so it's easily spread between trees that kind of thing, but there's two examples there for you. Um, okay, the next part of the question, so the next question was looking at the malaria parasite, explains how malaria parasite is able to bypass the body's primary defences. So if we remember what primary defences are, things like the mucous membranes, uh, the skin, uh, those kind of things. What we know about the malaria parasite is it's carried by the mosquito and the mosquito pierces the skin and injects the parasite directly into the blood thereby bar thereby bypassing the primary defences. Okay, so there's the two main points there. Um, next question I asked you about um, damage to trees in the genus Boswellia release the aromatic resin frankincense which soon hardens to cover the wound. Suggest two ways in which frankincense contributes to defending the tree from pathogens. So the key information here must be something to do with the aromatic resin and obviously something to do with covering the wound. So we can say that, first of all, by covering the wound it prevents pathogens entering. Okay, And we must, the, the resin itself must have some form of um, a useful property. Um, what we may know, or we can at least um, make a, a guess at, is that the resin is antibacterial in some way. Okay, So it defends the tree from the pathogen because it's antibacterial. Um, then this question talks about um, frankincense being used to relieve the pain of rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, And it just asks what type of disease is rheumatoid arthritis? And we need to know that it is an autoimmune disease. Okay, so that is one of the diseases I asked you to kind of find out a little bit more about. Um, so then it talks about trees being overused for harvesting frankincense do not live long and are becoming increasingly rare. Explain how traditional remedies, such as the use of frankincense, provide a strong argument for conservation of biodiversity. Okay, so a couple of points that we can make here. Uh, many medicines are developed from traditional remedies, many mod modern medicines, sorry. So that would be a reason to keep the, uh, 
um, biodiversity. Many plants produce molecules made with medical benefits, and many molecules are simply not, dis not yet discovered. So there's three decent reasons there for um, maintaining biodiversity and keeping traditional uh, medicines available to use. Now then, I'm going to come on to the two six mark questions. Okay, I'm going to do this in two different ways. The first one of these, okay, I have um, I've written an answer to already. Okay, you can see that here. Um, and what I'm going to get you to do, okay, in a minute, I'm going to show you, talk you through the mark scheme, and I'm going to get you to try and mark your own answer in a similar way. Okay. What I'm going to do first, just because of the way the questions are worded, this is easier to do this one this way, is take question number four, which is about the Ebola outbreak. Okay. And this is a very pertinent question at the moment, um, talking about how the, the viral disease okay, was spread by contact with infected bodily fluids. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to construct this question together, oh, sorry, to just answer together, I'm going to go through and add my key information so that we can obtain those, those six marks. So it says um, some bits of, some facts, I'm going to come back to those in a moment, okay, I'm going to talk about the question first of all, it says a number of common factors affect the spread of communicable diseases in humans and some of them are relevant to the spread of Ebola. We know about how communicable diseases are spread, we've talked about that, okay, and it says a number of these are relevant to Ebola. From the information above, okay, so from this information, discuss these factors and discuss and suggest what actions could have been put in place to address them. So we need to think about the factors and what actions, okay, could have been put in place. The factors are all here. The actions are what we need to then think about, okay? So... We're going to come up, I'm going to come up with a bunch of factors. I think I've got six. Okay, so that gives us the information that we need. Okay, now when we're doing a six mark question at A level, we need to remember we're not just looking for six points. We're looking for um, a constructed answer. Okay, that of good science. Okay, and it's all about science communication. So being able to um, communicate properly. It doesn't mean you have to write an essay. Okay, it just means you need to. Um, construct your answer properly. So let's look at the information here. So it says at the start of the outbreak there was a severe lack of trained health workers. That's going to be a factor. Okay. In the affected areas and much of the nursing was carried out in the family home or in local clinics. Many residents lived in close proximity okay, to one another and sanitation was often of a poor standard. standard okay. In times of illness, it was common for people to travel to stay with close relatives, okay, often in nearby villages or towns. As the outbreak spread, some residents left their villages to flee from the disease. And then local mourning and burial practices involved gathering at the family house to pay respects to the deceased. Okay, uh, gatherings. Prior to burial, the deceased was usually bathed by close family members. So, loads of information here to pick out. Okay, let's go through what one thing or two. And what we're going to do is we're going to pick out the factor and we're going to pick out the response, okay, or so the action. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about uh, there was a lack of trained health professionals. So therefore, there would have been a lack of vaccination or treatment, or even a lack of understanding about transmission. Okay, this is my factor. So what would be the action? Okay. Action would be to perhaps increase trained health, trained health staff in hospitals or clinics. So put more staff in. 
or train local people. Okay, that would be the most obvious action for that factor. Okay, there's the first one. Second one, I said that lots of the ill people were, were cared for by their family. Okay, so the ill cared for by family. So therefore, okay, family would have been exposed to pathogen. Okay. Lack of safe technique. So they would not have been hand washing probably. They would not have been wearing protective clothing, PPE and gloves and all that sort of thing. Okay. Um, pathogens can spread more easily. And we can say how do they spread? We know that it's in bodily fluids, so it's going to be droplets by coughing and sneezing. Uh, what could we do? Okay. What would be our action? Restrict care to trained health professionals. Okay. And also make sure there is better access to hospitals. So that's two factors. Let's look at the third one. Okay. Um, here's here's many residents lived in close proximity. Okay, so probably overcrowding. Okay, close proximity. So o overcrowding, which obviously means the pathogen can be spread more easily. And we can say again, how is it spread? Okay, um, an action uh, less sharing of rooms. We could even say social distancing. Okay, we would know what that would mean. That would be our action. So that's number three. Uh, number four, we go working through these, okay, poor, um, poor standard of um, waste disposal, poor sanitation, um, so easy to pick up pathogen. I'm going to go on to the next over to the next page. Okay. Um, possible action, therefore, would be to um, maybe use public information. Yeah, like we have done here. Public information or warnings. Hand sanitizer, sanitizers, etc. Okay. Uh, we're in quite a privileged position at the moment, so this question obviously um, it refers to an outbreak a few years ago, but the actions, the factors and the actions are very similar to what we're experiencing right now. Let's look at number five. Okay, uh, let's go back. Here, we're talking about people fleeing their villages, travelling to stay with close relatives, okay, so you have lots of travel, okay. Um, to avoid disease and also just to be with their, their loved ones okay so this means that the pathogens can spread to wider area and obviously this is something we're seeing at the moment okay and why we're so why we're stopping travel is because that pathogen cannot be contained if it is spread by people traveling okay um, 
And that means it can become a pandemic. Okay. So, what would be the action? A travel ban. Quite, quite simply. Okay. Restrict travel. We're going to look at number six. Okay, the last one. Okay, so if I go back again, um, and this is around the local mourning and burial practices. Okay, gathering of family house, people and um, the deceased being bathed by close family members. Okay, so we would just say the mourning and burial practices. Okay. So it may be difficult to change those. It's difficult to change um, religious practices, which bring people into close contact. Okay. So the obvious action would be to to dry and um, have a suitable alternative okay and there would be need to be some sort of um, involvement with local um, leaders to help with that people who understand culturally the, uh, the difficulties okay so what we've got there okay is a comprehensive answer now we've covered six factors okay and their actions we wouldn't need to um, write all of those down to be able to get the six marks. Okay, I've got more information than I need there for six marks, but I have covered absolutely everything, okay, and I can be pretty confident that I've got six marks there. Um, and I'm going to examine why that is using the other question. Okay, so if I put up now, okay, this other question, so this was put earlier in the, the paper about um, the uh, non specific defense against pathogens, okay. Looking at these observations around um, the immune response to a, a cut, okay. I've written an answer here, okay. I've said, I said it was, so the, the question says, describe the non specific defenses against pathogens that would explain all these observations. Um, bleeding stopped, scab forming, uh, then some swelling, red and inflammation, some red and tender, and then also some small swelling and discomfort in their armpit. I've talked through some of the information here. Okay, I've written down my answer. I've said that the bleeding stopped due to a clot forming. This involves platelets being exposed to collagen, causing the clotting process. The clot then dries to form a scab, which stops more pathogens entering. The swelling is due to the infection by the pathogen, which is detected, and then histamine is released, causing inflammation. When the phagocytes are attracted to the area, and phagocytosis takes place. The discomfort in the armpit is due to pathogens surviving and travelling to the lymph nodes causing swelling. Now, I'm pretty happy with that answer. Do I think it's six marks? Maybe, maybe not. I'm going to look now with you at the uh, comprehensive okay, um, mark scheme for this. Okay. So, this is what we uh, is going to be used to help us mark. Okay, it says, um, first of all, read through the whole answer. Okay, be prepared to recognize and credit unexpected approaches where they show relevance. Okay, so just because it's not, it, it may not, maybe stuff that's not included here, I can still award it some marks. Using a best fit approach based on the science content of the answer, first decide which of the level descriptors, one, two, or three, best describes the overall quality of the answer. Then, award the higher or lower mark within the level according to the communication statement shown in italics. Okay, higher where it is met, lower where it has been missed. So, the sign content determines the level, the communication statement determines the mark within a level. Okay, then my mark scheme goes through the three different levels. So, for a level three, a clear description how the non-specific defences cause all or nearly all of the observed responses, making reference to clotting, scab formation, inflammation and swelling of the lymph nodes. 
All observations are clearly explained in full and with a clear link between each, each observation and each explanation. Okay. Uh, logical thread linking each observe, observation in the correct time, like timeline as the immune system comes into action. Specialist terms used throughout. Okay, the next part. Okay, level. So if I'm not sure, I go down to a level two. A clear description of the non-specific responses that cause some of the observed responses, making reference to clotting and scab formation. One to do with inflammation of the cut and/or swelling of the lymph node. Some explanations are provided, but these may not link clearly to the observation or may not be complete explanations. The information is clear and concise using a number of scientific terms appropriately. And then finally, a level one, a limited description of the non-specific responses covering at least one of the observations to do with clotting and scab formation, inflammation of the cut or swelling of the lymph nodes. Explanations are given for the observation. Um, observation, but the explanation is not clear, and there is no clear link between the observation and. Uh, hold on, <laughs> um, and the explanation. Sorry, um, there's the last part. There is a logical structure to the answer. The explanation, though basic, is clear. No marks, no response, or no response worthy of credit. Okay. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do guys for this is I want you to mark your answer so it's really important that you have had a go at this question okay and you use your um, and you mark your answer so I'm going to um, upload this mark scheme okay to the um, to the team site so that you can use that mark scheme to help you and what I want you to do is use the mark scheme to try and give yourself a leveled mark then I want you to submit your marked work on teams for me so that I can check and decide whether I agree with your mark or highlight any things that I think may be incorrect. Um, so that's the first part. Okay, those are the pathogen uh, set of exam questions. I will do a separate video for the other questions that we did, um, which will be a lot shorter. Okay, if you have any comments or questions about that, please do let me know. Uh, look forward to speaking to you soon.